What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Different, and welcome to the Different World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there are having a wonderful day like any girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever you want because I guarantee you all, it's surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time, or more, and you're not new to you or if you're new to me, welcome. Happy to have you guys. Before you leave, don't forget hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So when I drop the content, you guys come into the different world, you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of coming and learning, you guys, I'm an author, motivation speaker, excuse me, travel influencer, content creator, and CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or don't matter, hit the subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys, so today is Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, you guys, uh, in January, I write. I'm uh, trying to get this content out for you guys. So we got a lot of things coming up next month, like this three month. And so with that, uh, this uh, Tuesday, you guys know on Tuesday we do our social awareness topic. And so with this one, we're going to close uh, the month of January. I want the awareness of cervical cancer. And for those out there that's going to the battle, that lost the battle, that's uh, been affected or know a loved one or a friend that hasn't been affected by cervical cancer or has lost the battle to it, this is one to you guys' dedication. My research, uh, you guys know I found uh, through CDC.gov uh, in 2024. They posted their five main facts about it and it was cervical cancer reasons and how it's caused. And um, one main fact about it is that it's caused from the H1B virus or the human papillomavirus, which is the same transmitted disease. And so uh, I'm not going to go over to the detail of that, guys, do your research. And uh, again, I always disclose I'm not, you know, no licensed medical professionalist, I'm no legal advisor in that, so all this information I'm giving you is for entertainment and education purposes, but again, be advised to do your own homework and your own research, even though I am giving you these resources and these statistics. Uh, so with that, moving on, uh, the second factor I found is that less than 200 cases uh, in the U.S. come about with cervical cancer, as well as globally, we have around about 604,000 cases. And uh, in 2020, I believe, it said that around 342,000 uh, people have lost their battles to cervical cancer. Um, as well as uh, those who are with cervical cancer. Uh, basically, it is a lytic uh, cancer, excuse me, a lytic tumor that's on the uh, on the surface in the world. So, make sure And with that being said, uh, to follow up with the fact, and to do a little bit more explanation, you guys know when it comes to, you know, uh, giving you guys education or motivating you guys, I often feel that you need to hear from more than one person or more than one source who knows what they're talking about better than me. And so with that, check out this information or informative video that I found explaining more thoroughly what cervical cancer is, how it's caused, so it's a little bit more in depth of what HPV virus is and where it comes from. And so with that, this is also by the Balancing Act. So um, check out their video, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about it and uh, things that's going on in the world. Yep, yeah, here it is. Ladies, I have a personal question for you. Do you know where your cervix is? It's a pretty personal question, but it turns out to be very relevant. That's right, because if you don't know where your cervix is, chances are you also don't know your cervical cancer risk. So today, we're gonna help increase your awareness of what cervical cancer really is and decrease some of the stigma behind cervical cancer. First, meet a courageous mother and survivor. Take a look. Hi, my name is Marilis Clavisha and I am 43 years old. I am an educator. I have a master's degree in education uh, and I did various roles um, through my working years. My partner and I live in New Hampshire. We have four kids together. I have a daughter from a prior marriage and we have a son together and I have two stepsons. And we are a non-traditional blended loving family. But in 2019, Marillis received a shocking and devastating medical diagnosis. In September 2019, I started feeling some symptoms that were not normal. 
and I talked to my primary care physician. I felt that there was something else going on and that I needed uh, uh, the second opinion. So I advocated for myself. Sometimes you have to do that and look for answers. I, and I did. I reached out to my gynecologist oncologist and they diagnosed me with metastatic cervical cancer. When I heard the news, the first thing that, that comes to your mind is, as a mother, is your children. And I said, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna win this game. I started treatment and things got worse. Um, I was not responding to the treatment. Uh, the cancer was advancing and it moved to four or five parts of my body. And my prognosis was about 18 months. It was very emotional. But incredibly, Marillis refused to give up hope. She and her partner, Dan, began a desperate search for clinical trials and eventually found Dr. Marilyn Huang. I met, first met Marillis when she had just been diagnosed with recurrent metastatic cervical cancer, which is very devastating because most women who are diagnosed with this disease um, have approximately less than two years um, to live. And so they were as understandably quite um, desperate and had been um, looking for other options for treatment. Advocates like Marillis and Dr. Huang believe sharing the facts about cervical cancer and cervical cancer prevention is very important. Cervical cancer arises from normal cells on the cervix that have changes that develop over time, um, first into precancerous or dysplastic cells, and then eventually into cancer. For most women, they're able to clear those abnormal cells on their own, um, but unfortunately for some women, like Marillis, their, their immune system is not able to, and it does progress to cancer. Since most cervical cancers are caused by persistent infection with human papillomavirus or HPV, and because almost all HPV transmission happens through sexual contact, cervical cancer as a whole has suffered from long-standing stigma and misunderstanding. HPV virus is readily transmissible from any skin-to-skin -skin contact, and there is a lot of stigma and misconceptions surrounding HPV and HPV vaccination, which is really unwarranted since anyone who has had any sexual encounter could be exposed uh, to HPV. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, the HPV vaccine is the standard for prevention of cancers caused by HPV. The HPV vaccine is a vaccine that helps prevent cancer causing infections in precancers, and it is incredibly effective. Currently, the HPV vaccine is recommended for both boys and girls as routine vaccination starting at the age of 11 to 12, although vaccination can start earlier. Vaccination is recommended for everyone through age 26. The vaccination is not recommended for everyone older than age 26. Some adults that are age 27 to 45 who have not already been vaccinated might be eligible to receive the HPV vaccine based on discussions with their doctor on risks and potential benefits. According to cervical cancer experts like Dr. Huang, awareness of screening guidelines is also important. So over the past few years, the screening guidelines for cervical cancer have changed based on the society or organization that are providing the recommendations. However, the American College of Gynecology endorses the following from the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force. All women aged 21 to 65 should have regular cervical cancer screenings, and recommendations differ based on age. Women 21 to 29 should have pap tests every three years, and women 30 to 64 should have pap tests and HPV tests every five years. For women that are older than 65, screening may not be required if all of their screenings previously were regularly performed and all results were normal. Despite increasing awareness, the percentage of women in the United States who are overdue for their cervical cancer screening has been growing in recent years, which is why advocates like Dr. Huang and Marillis continue to speak out. 
I'm good, Dr. Han. How are you? I think that women needs to be aware that this is a very deadly disease and that there is an option for a vaccination that they can take uh, from my own age. We started our treatment. It was not easy. It was not easy. And after six months, I was on remission. I'm in remission since May 2020. I was flying for my treatment to a different state. And uh, for me, being able to use telehealth and do some of my appointments online, it was uh, a huge uh, benefit. And it was very sad when I end the trial. I'm now kind of on my own and I don't see Dr. Juan every three weeks. So I miss her. I miss seeing all my nurses and the staff. Since 2019, every year is a blessing and I'm thankful for that. I thank God every day. I was able to see my daughter's engagement. Uh, I was able to be at her wedding and dance at her wedding um, all night long. I also saw my son uh, confirmation. So it's been a blessing for me to being able, being able to be here and be part of all of this. Cervical cancer is a preventable disease, so it's really important to talk to your healthcare provider about your eligibility for the HPV vaccine, as well as the screening recommendations that would be right for you. The most rewarding part of my job is to get to spending some time with um, these amazing women, and they are true warriors. We'd like to thank our two wonderful cervical cancer advocates, Marillis and Dr. Wong. And for more information about cervical cancer screening and awareness, go to survivor.org. That's C E R B I B E R dot and the Foundation for Women's Cancer dot org. You could also go to our website, thebalancingact.com. So, ladies, do not forget to schedule your cervical cancer screening. We'll be back right after this. Alright guys, welcome, welcome back. back. I hope, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed listening, listening to the Education Informant video from, from the Balancing Act. Act. To give you more information on what cervical cancer is, how it's caused, and how it can be treated. And so again, be sure as you guys comment and see you subscribe and uh, get that notification bell to my YouTube channel. Be sure to go and check them out and show us as well. With that, uh, just follow me in the video and inform the line and give my advice um, with those who have having cervical cancer.
party. You can be looking to be, be a part of the grassroots conversation. Get at your girl on my website again, dippin12.net. I am free of charge as of now. So again, just go to my website and put your girl there. Um, as well as if I find you on a DM, email, I am hard to find. Just get at your girl this weekend. Uh, what, what else we got? got? My book, of course, uh, <laughs> we've got Black History Month around the corner, and that's the perfect time. And then I'm going to uh, get you a copy of it again. This book, what the controversial character. I really need to learn that it's using a and form thoughtful conversation about injustice and racism. And I'm done too, but I have to get it the So again, guys, be advised that this is intended for a future audience. It has sensitive content, and so if you can't take this IP, just get it to the bottom, and you'll be all right. That's the point of it all, you guys. Just have these conversations that need to be had, that are often sort of a drug, you watch know, like to turn the blind eye to. The way that I've said it, this book up, it's just set up in a manner that's meant to, you know, push that envelope to have these conversations that need to be had. Not so more just about pissing people off, rubbing people the wrong way. Yes, it will do that for some, but it's more than that. Those who are mature enough to make it through the first three paradigms, historical, political, and precedent, when you make it to hypothetical, you'll see that it's more than just about, you know, picking in the past and point fingers. It's more so about unity. You can come to the end of something about kind of validity and acknowledgement, figure out ways that we can come up with systemic change instead of dwelling on systemic racism. And so, again, go to my website, digitalsworld.net, and get you a copy of my book. Get one, two, five, ten, share with me any so And then again, don't forget to leave your review on Amazon. I definitely appreciate all the love and support. Please keep it coming and don't stop. Uh, we'll right along with the different What else you got going on? What else? 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 Guys,
What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.